Hi, in this video, we'll learn how to create a Spring MUC web application using Spring Boot, um, Timelip, JPA, and MySQL database. To demonstrate this, I am going to use my website. So, javanet.net is my website. So, I am going to use a reference of my website here. So, go to the Spring Boot uh, tab and here uh, just uh, choose Spring Boot to Tutorials. So, in this Spring Boot tutorial series, you can find around 100 plus Spring Boot tutorials I have implemented and all the source code of this Spring Boot tutorial I have published on my GitHub repository. Alright, so just scroll down and go to the Spring Boot web development uh, section. Uh, here you can find this is a tutorial we are going to implement in this video. Just open in a, a new tab. Alright. So this is the article I am going to take as a reference in this video. So I, am, I will be providing a link of this tutorial along with this YouTube video so that anytime you can check out this tutorial. So the best way to uh, use this tutorial is just uh, download or clone the source code of this tutorial. Uh, just go to end of this tutorial. I have provided a link for uh, GitHub repository. All right. So this is the source code on GitHub section. Under, under here you can find this is the link. Just to uh, open this link in a new tab. So this is the GitHub repository uh, where I have hosted all the source code. Okay, what you can do is you can just clone it or you can download this repository on your machine and just extract. If you are download this uh, uh, this repository, then you you need to extract it and you can import this uh, project. Uh, in your Eclipse ID or uh, any Spring tool suit ID uh, that you are familiar with. Alright. And I have given a step by step explanation for each file of this uh, project. Alright. So let me open up my Spring tool suit ID uh, where I have basically imported this project and I will explain you the source code and the flow of the project and I will demonstrate you the working example of this project. All right. So here is the Spring Boot uh, web app timely project, which I have imported. Uh, I have downloaded from the GitHub repository and imported it in Spring Tool Suite ID. All right. So first of all, uh, open the form.xml. All right. So here you can see we are using Spring Boot 2 Plus, and we are using uh, Spring Data. Spring Boot Starter Data JP Dependency. All right, so uh, when we use this dependency, uh, it will configure the data source for us. So we no need to manually you know, configure a data source and other bins. And this Spring Data JP uses uh, Hibernate as a JP provider. So inter it, inter it internally uses Hibernate Fio uh, as a JP provider. And basically, the Spring Data JPA is not an implementation or a JPA provider. It's just an abstraction used to significantly reduce the amount of code or amount of boilerplate code required to implement a DAO layer for uh, any persistent store. All right. So uh, basically, it internally uses Hibernate as a JPA provider. And this uh, web dependency is basically used to create a Spring MUC or uh, Spring RESTful applications. And we are using timelib because uh, we are using timelib uh, as a view layer. So, so this dependency provides the support for integrating timelib to Spring Boot. And here we are using MySQL database. So we have, we have included MySQL connector dependency. So this is how the perm.xml looks like. And this is the Marvin project. So we need to add all the Marvin uh, dependencies and plugins and other configuration in perm.xml. Let's look at the app.configuration file. So here you can see I have defined all the mask uh, configurations. So in order to connect to the mask, we need to provide a link. And we need to provide a username password. And here is uh, the Hibernate property configurations. It's pretty simple, right? And this is a message dot properties. Uh, basically, we can, uh, we can also uh, provide internalization or localization over here. So I have just configured all the properties uh, uh, in this message.properties. 
so right now i have only app dot title so you can configure as per your requirement and let, let's go ahead and look at the our uh, gp entity so look at the packaging structure over here uh, it's a controller package under controller package we basically locate all the spring controllers and under domain package we locate all the gpa domain entities and under repository package we basically store all the spring data repositories all right so, so let's look first look at the user uh, gpa entity so this is a simple uh, user class uh, which is annotated with uh, uh, entity annotation uh, so basically uh, all the domain models uh, must be annotated with uh, this entity annotation uh, it is used to mark this class as a persistent java class and here you can see this is the table annotation uh, it is used to provide a details of the table that the entity will be mapped to right so now, right now we have provided a table name as a user we can also provide a schema and other details all right so if we don't specify this annotation uh, table annotation then uh, by default uh, the entity class name will, will be a name of the table all right so here uh, basically we are using uh, id annotation to define the primary key of the entity and if we don't if we don't specify id annotation then primary key uh, in the column name is uh, assumed to be the name of uh, uh, name of the id all right so here you can see this is a, a generated value annotation uh, is used to define the primary key generation strategy in our case we are uh, using on auto increment uh, the generation strategy right all right so this is a very simple uh, uh, you know jpa uh, domain entity let's uh, look at the uh, spring abc controller now all right so this is a home controller class which is annotated with a controller annotation so controller annotation is used to indicate the class is a spring controller and this annotation uh, can be used to identify controllers for spring mvc or spring rest or spring uh, web plux all right so in here we have uh, injected and auto wired spring repository so we can use this spring repo object uh, I know to call the APIs. All right, and here we are using uh, we have created an API or uh, created a method which is annotated with request mapping annotation. So this uh, request mapping annotation is used uh, both at a at a class level and method level. Request mapping annotation is used to map a web request uh, onto a specific handler classes and handler methods. All right. So this is a simple uh, home controller class. Let's look at the user repository uh, file. So we have created a user repository interface which extends uh, JPA repository. And here we are passing the entity name and the ID. All right. So basically uh, uh, we need to provide here annotation. Repository annotation. All right so this uh, basically this is jp repository uh, interface which defines a method for all the core operations on a on the entity so the default implementation of jp repository is uh, uh, implemented in a simple jp repository class all right so this is how typically a uh, you know, repository looks like this and here you can see uh, we are using a uh, time leap so we have created an index.html and uh, here you can see uh, few of the time leap uh, directives so the, here you can see we have compared this app.title in our messages.properties file so whatever the name we give you are it will be uh, bind to that uh, variable all right so it's pretty simple index.html here we are basically created a table and we are 
looping we are looping the uh, list of users and we are just uh, uh, you know printing a list of users in a table we are just displaying a list of users in a table so pretty simple time leap for template yeah this is the pretty much uh, you know the files and the source code looks like let's go ahead and run this application and we will see the demo uh, in order to run this application just uh, right click it uh, run as either choose a java application or a spring boot uh, application so before that you can see here i have implemented a command line render interface it provides a run a method i we can override this run method and we can you can you know uh, store uh, the data uh, while the uh, uh, while deployment of this application so when we run this application that that time only this data will be stored in a mysql database all right so let's run this application now Here we go, the data is inserted, and you can see here the, uh, the Tomcat server is running on port 8080. So, when we include a Spring, Spring Boot uh, uh, starter web dependency, then it provides uh, support for uh, embedded Tomcat server. All right. So, basically, we can run Spring Boot application as a standalone or uh, using uh, embedded Tomcat server which runs on port 8080. Right now, our application is up and running. Let's test from the browser now. Let me open a tab here and just type localhost 8080. Yeah, here we go. Alright, so this is the Spring. Uh, this is the web page that we have created using Timeleaf, and we have displayed a list of users uh, onto the um, uh, web page. All right. Let's change this title and let's uh, see. So let's rerun the application. Right. Let's go to the browser and refresh it. So here we go. The data is, uh, you know, uh, this title is uh, reflected over here. So we can uh, configure like this. So here we have listed. Uh, this displays a list of users because uh, we have uh, we have provided Spring. Did Spring GP Hibernate DDL auto as a update? So hence uh, it won't you know uh, drop the table. It will uh, insert the records or it uh, you know uh, it will append the record to the existing table. So in order to in order to create and drop, let's create a new table and let's insert these records and let us see. Here we go. So when we uh, provide a uh, auto DDL auto DDL DDL value as a create a drop, then it will create a fresh table. It will drop the existing table. It will create a new new table and it will insert the values. And now we are populating that uh, records uh, on a web page. This is how the simple uh, Spring uh, AWS web application using Spring Boot and Timely. So in next uh, tutorials, we will, I will be covering uh, Spring Boot Timelib code example where I am basically implementing create, uh, read, update, delete user uh, functionality. Alright, so I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.